Welcome to Yellow Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and this is Scenes from a Non-Existent Book. I'm working on a book or something, a novel or a novella or a short story or an animation or a comic or a bunch of disparate scenes that all take place in the same world but are collected in my Substack email newsletter. I'm not sure what it will become yet, but um, I'm not really one to kind of work in the dark. And so I like sharing my process and... Um, I'll be iterating this out loud, like I always do. So right now, that looks like I'll be doing that in these videos, podcast episodes, uh, or email newsletters, um, kind of all of those things. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, then there is a version of this that's on Substack as well. And you can catch that at coreyker.com slash email. Um, these are also going to be one take, no edits, no frills. Um, and I am not a professional narrator. So uh, if you want to read this instead of listening to me butcher it, um, jump over to coreykerr.com slash email, and uh, you can read the newsletter where all of this was written out, and you don't have to listen to me stumble over the words. Um, I think this is a fun book. I think it's a cool idea. These scenes are in no particular order, and many of them will change or hit the cutting room floor uh, when or if all of this is collected into a final version. Um, and so what you're getting is me writing something for the first time um, in, in a long form con context. Um, and uh, finally, if by, if by some random miracle uh, there is a publisher, agent, or editor uh, that's interested in this uh, or what I'm doing here, uh, feel free to reach out and we can talk. Okay, without any further ado, here is the cafe scene. Normally, punching a baby in the face is generally frowned upon in polite society, but normal things happen during normal times. These are abnormal times. Or time itself has become abnormal? To be honest, no one's really sure. In any case, when Anne punched the baby sitting across from her, everyone in the cafe turned, but no one had the outrage or shock that you would expect when a 25-year-old woman smacks a baby in the face. Instead, they calmly watched as the baby rapidly snapped back into her current age. Anne rubbed her sore knuckles as the now 24-year-old Jessica said, Thanks. Of course, Anne said and continued, So I'm just not sure if I want to take it further with Dave. Because of the video games? Jessica, now 27, with a streak of pink in her hair and a few more piercings, asked. Not just that. I mean, that's fine. It's just a little embarrassing, to be honest. Anne said, still 25, but three minutes older. She waited a moment as Jessica vibrated and blurred to see if she was slipping forward or back. Visually, it was like watching a VCR rewind a person, but not their surroundings. It always took a single second. Scientists would argue about the actual versus observed length of time that a slip took. Some claiming that theoretically, if a subject slipped forward two years, that slip took two years, but it was perceived to have taken a second. While others argued that the slip took one actual second, and the person emerged having all the memories of those two years without having, having actually experienced them. Still, other scientists would claim that this time dilation seemed to have nothing to do with gravity or folds in the space-time, although it was very difficult to actually test those theories. More rational people would shout, who cares, at all of these scientists because the results were exactly the same. If a person slipped in time, they retained all the memories and physical changes of the time that they landed on. This has drastically hampered conversations. If the person you're talking to slips forward, they likely will remember the conversation that you're having because they had it in their past. But if they slip backwards, they will lose all of the experiences that they have after their younger age, including everything that was said so far in the current conversation. Which is why a much younger Jessica blinked back at Anne and began looking around, trying not to panic. 12-year-old Jessica hadn't had these experiences yet. She hasn't been to this cafe roomed with Anne in college, stayed in touch with Anne after they graduated, nor heard anything that Anne had said in the last 30 minutes, because those past 30 minutes were in 12-year-old Jessica's future and her immediate present. Where am I? Who are you? What? 12-year-old Jessica found it difficult to finish her third question, because blinding pain adds a degree of difficulty to speech, and an old woman had just hit her in the face with a closed fist. With a vignette of stars closing in on her vision, Jessica snapped back to her present age. She shook her head slightly and said, Oh, thank you. Of course, dear, said an ADE seven-year-old Anne. She was bowed down with decades future, at least six inches shorter with her now curved spine. 
Her bones ached, and she could tell that it was about to rain because the hardware they used to reconstruct her hip was giving her a sharp pain. She touched the wet paper-thin skin of her cheek with her skeletal hands and asked, Do you mind? Not at all, Jessica said as she reached back, twisting her torso and planting her back foot. She then uncoiled and punched her old friend so hard that she toppled over her chair and landed flat on her back, which quickly straightened out as she snapped back into her current age. Sorry, you were saying? Anne prompted as she once again smoothed her skirt down as she sat. Oh yeah, Dave, it's kind of shallow now that I'm saying it out loud, but he slipped forward. Ah, and you didn't like what you saw. Ah, it is shallow, but he goes bald in the future, and not a good bald where he's still fit and bicks his head clean, but like a comb over that isn't fooling anyone kind of long in the sides kind of bald. Yeah, dating nowadays is tough. I think we used to be able to grow old together. I don't know. And she didn't know. No one actually knew. There was a general sense that something was wrong with time and that it hadn't always been this way, but no one can actually remember when any of this started. Scientists and philosophers can't even agree on whether the word started makes any sense in this context. Most people think of time as a linear chain of events and that events happen in a specific order and are separated by time. But this view of time tends to fall apart when you start to consider the order of events with these time slips. For example, when Anne slipped backwards in time to a 12-year-old, she hadn't yet experienced the current moments of the conversation in that cafe, but now she was experiencing it. Are there two versions of Anne at 12 years old, one in the actual past and one that slipped into the current present? And this is where most people tell the scientists to just shut up. I'm sick of it. Just shut up about the time. Because it doesn't matter. The results are the same. Current Anne remembering 12, being 12 years old and riding her bike to her friend's house down the street, and at the same time remembers being struck in the face by an old woman in a cafe. Which doesn't make sense because broken things don't make sense, and time is breaking down. It hasn't completely broken down, but it was getting worse. In fact, no one knows this yet, but time itself wasn't breaking down as much as people's perception of the present moment was becoming unmoored from time. None of this occurred to Jessica, and even if it did, it wouldn't have mattered because Dave was going to be unfashionably bald. Anne continued, I guess you have to decide whether or not you can slowly convince him to shave his head and work out. You think we can change the future? I don't know. Robert used to wear his shirts inside out to get an extra day of use out of them, and now he wears button-down shirts that he irons himself. Guys need to be domesticated a little bit. They'd all be feral cavemen without us. This was more true than Anne realized. There used to be a possible future where a virus targeted the female population and men simply became quite utilitarian. The frills and niceties of society the frills and niceties of society fell away, and what was left was basic survival, somewhat cavemen-like. Scientists were able to change this possible future through the use of loop hacking. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Jessica continued somewhat distressed. But you don't know whether you change Dave's actual future and put him in some kind of alternate timeline or if the mature iron shirt Dave was inevitable. You're not actually sure whether the future can change. No, I guess none of us are sure, but you've got to decide whether you're going to bail at the flash of every future that you see with someone. People age and change, and you're either going to die alone or come to grips with the fact that you can happily grow old with someone as you both age and change. Not all of us get to grow old, Jessica almost shouted and began to tear up. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. That slipped my mind. Listen, I do think the future can change. That doesn't have to be your future. Scientists are making huge discoveries every day with loop hacking. And who's to say that they won't cure cancer before you get it? Anne said reassuringly. They might. I hope they do. I'm just hoping that I don't slip too far forward and pull a clenner. The phrase pull a clenner is a reference to a rather traumatic incident that happened to a news anchor, Walter Clenner, who died during a live broadcast of the 6 o'clock news. Well, he didn't actually die on the air, but he slipped too far forward in time and passed his future death. One moment, he was reporting the results of the exit polls, and then he slipped forward to a decaying corpse. It was quite morose, and what made matters worse was that his co-host tried snapping him back to his present age and punched his head clean off of his body on live television. It seems that there are two points of no return with time slipping. After death and before birth. If anyone slips past either of these points, no amount of smacking will bring them back to their present age, and they die, or are dead, 
or are never born? It doesn't matter. The results are the same. They aren't alive anymore. Klenner is thought to be the first recorded incident of slipping past death. No one is really sure of that, though, because no one is really sure when all this started or if it has always been this way. It does seem like there are a lot fewer children and elderly, elderly people nowadays. The closer you are to either end, the more likely you are to slip too far into the past or future. Let's leave Jessica to contemplate the possible future hairline of her boyfriend and move to a much more urgent set of circumstances. So there's uh, one of the scenes that I've written. I'll um, record one of these every once in a while. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Um, anyway, kind of a weird way of doing things. I don't have a storyline yet, um, but I'm, I'm doing some uh, kind of like playing with these scenes as I do some world building and kind of flesh out kind of the rules of uh, the present moment becoming unmoored from time for individuals uh, randomly. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, listening, and or reading. And uh, if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of these, um, then jump onto coreycurr.com slash email and subscribe to the email newsletter. Uh, subscribe on YouTube and all that stuff as well. And um, anyway, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Catch you guys later. Go make stuff.